Hello, uh, my name is Colin Bateman from IGS. Uh, we've seen that uh, corrosion happens in uh, our process plants in ammonia production. What this presentation is going to look at is some practical field applied solutions in order to mitigate that corrosion activity and to stop the metal wastage taking place and damaging your equipment. So we have the requirement to remove uh, the CO2 from the process stream. And this necessitates a reliable separation system. And uh, amine treatment has been proven to be the, the principal commercially established method for this purification process and this separation. Um, amine systems are subject to corrosion mechanisms, which are generally not found in other areas of the plant. Um, and even though those mechanisms are well known, amine systems are designed to handle them um, they can often suffer from aggressive uh, internal metal wastage challenges. And this can be due to many factors um, leading to operators running units outside of their ideal design conditions. Typically uh, designed to use MDEA as the active amine, like Philip talked about previously in his presentation, uh, if you overload the amine, uh, this can lead to an extremely aggressive corrosion condition. If you have uh, too much CO2, it leads to the amine being overloaded, causing the CO2 to be regenerated or released uh, throughout the process. Um, a risk can result in lots of localized aggressive corrosion conditions. And corrosion, as we saw, is widely acknowledged as one of the main reasons uh, for amine system failures. So a preventative maintenance strategy combined with an effective corrosion management um, is really a key requirement to minimize the amine system shutdown. And what we're going to talk about in this presentation is a field applied technology which has been highly successful in delivering long term internal surface protection of amine systems um, over the last 20 years against this type of corrosion activity taking place. So how do we isolate the internal surfaces of equipment from from this environment, uh, from this process? One thing we can do is we can upgrade the internal metallurgy or the surface metallurgy inside the unit. So if we can install an alloy upgrade, that will provide a permanent barrier to prevent further metal loss. So we install a high nobility alloy onto the surface of the, the carbon steel. That high nobility alloy is inert to the environment, non-reactive, and it will not corrode, and it will prevent the underlying substrate from being in contact with the uh, corrosion mechanisms. So it will isolate the carbon steel from any further corrosion activity. There's different methodologies to install a field applied alloy upgrade. Um, you can do strip cladding, you can do weld metal overlay. What this presentation is going to focus on is high velocity thermal spray as a technique to install a high nobility alloy. One of the principal benefits of high velocity thermal spray for this process is we don't create a heat affected zone. For the substrate, it's effectively a cold process. So there's no requirement for post weld heat treatment. There's no risk of uh, creating um, differential metallurgies or harder phases in your substrate when you apply with a thermal spray process. So when we talk about thermal spray, um, there, there are a number of different techniques and class of technologies available in the marketplace. IGS, we use high velocity thermal spray processes. So on the family tree of thermal spray, you can see that on the left hand side, with an electrical heat source where we use an arc and two wires to melt the feedstock. We use a high velocity arc spray process. On the right hand side of the tree, you can see with a high velocity oxy fuel where we use a flame and a powder feedstock um, in order to atomize the metal. That is then projected onto the surface using this carrier gas. And what's critical is that we have a supersonic gas speed, either created by the design of the gun or created by the velocity of the flame in your oxy fuel process. Thermal sprays are a very useful technology because we can apply a wide range of different alloys and materials. And you'll see in this presentation that using different alloys, we can address different types of corrosion, different corrosion mechanisms that we can see. Um, as we said before, it's a mechanical bond. There's no uh, metallurgical bond with the substrate, so there's no heat affected zone. Another thing we have to be aware of is in-flight oxidation. So we're melting a, mel a metal and spraying it onto a surface in atmosphere. So we have to carefully manage that in-flight oxidation process. 
So when we think about thermal spray, high velocity processes, why do we choose that class of technology? Because we know that the other types of technology do not perform in these environments. They create a permeable barrier, which is then obviously compromised, causing corrosion underneath and failure. So low velocity systems, high velocity systems with high oxide content, fractured or micro crack systems don't work. IGS has used all these systems historically and used our understanding and experience to develop a thermal spray, a high velocity thermal spray system we use today, which develops these very dense microstructures. We mitigate uh, the oxides through alloy modification and we reduce the internal stress so we prevent any cracking. And these are the systems which perform in the field and have shown the long term uh, corrosion protection requirements that we need. So this photograph shows two thermal spray um, classes of technology in, in, the, in action in the field. On the left hand side, you can see the high velocity arc spray. So with your two wires coming into the gun arcing and then a supersonic gas flow projecting it onto the surface. And on the right hand side, you can see high velocity oxy fuel where you have a powder feedstock and you have this uh, supersonic flame, which is then projecting that onto the surface. Both these classes of technology deposit high nobility alloys onto the substrate and facilitate the application of these claddings in the field to protect the carbon steel substrates. In the majority of cases, IGS use the arc spray system. It's, it's more robust, it's a bit quicker, uh, and is a bit more adaptable to field applications, but both systems can be used. And we've got examples of alloys applied with each system in this presentation. So the first area of application we're gonna look at is the amine columns. So in your amine columns, as we talked about, uh, particularly when you get the, the feedback of the, the rich uh, high temperature solution, if it's overloaded, that's where you can get a significant release of your carbon dioxide. That can form carbonic acid and create very aggressive localized corrosion conditions. So we'll look at a couple of case histories now of where those have been addressed using this class of technology. So this first example, an amine absorber tower, a section of the column uh, or the tower saw aggressive pitting corrosion. The client was concerned that they were gonna lose integrity of this vessel, start to get through wall uh, pitting corrosion. So they had to install a barrier system. They elected to use high velocity thermal spray we applied the systems back in 2011, 2012 in this middle section of the column. At each subsequent turnaround after the application, we did full inspections. So 2015, 16, 2019, 20. So this is after two turnaround cycles or after eight years in service. Um, the alloy applied is non-reactive. It does not corrode. So, so long as we create an impermeable barrier, it will last through the design life of the vessel. So in this case, there was no repairs uh, required to the applied system, and we actually extended the application into different areas of the vessel. Um, so it was a highly successful application, demonstrated its performance over the long term. This second example is slightly different. In this case, uh, they had a, a failure upstream of the column, leading to condensate getting in um, into this middle section and creating this very aggressive carbonic acid corrosion. This was found as a discovery scope during a shutdown or turnaround. In order to repair it with welding, the client would have had to have um, stabilized the vessel, loosened all the bolts, done the welding, post welding treatment. It would have extended their shutdown by probably three to four weeks. IGS was available to come to site immediately and we completed the application protecting this area in nine or 10 days. After the application was completed, because in certain areas of this vessel, they, the client was right down to their minimum uh, uh, wall thickness. They had to very carefully monitor. They didn't lose any more of that integrity. So they did external and internal inspections. And as you can see, there was no change after the application of the IGS system. IGS has 20 years of experience of applying this class of thermal spray technology in amine systems, uh, both sweet and uh, sour processes. Over that time, we've installed this technology in more than 100 columns and have protected more than 3,000 square meters of internal surface area. The second uh, corrosion mechanism we were going to look at today is metal dusting. This is a, a high temperature uh, corrosion condition um, above 400 degrees C where your iron um, is susceptible to this uh, metal dusting uh, 
uh, M3C carbamation formation, where the metal literally turns to dust and is then removed by the um, turbulent atmosphere or the, uh, the flow assisted uh, corrosion. So this is frequently found in ammonia plants where we have um, low steam and high carbon conditions. So you can see the photographs there of the process taking place, the F, F or the M3C formation, and then the metal dust being um, removed from the surface of the alloy. For this application, IGS uses an HVOF process. So if you recall from the previous slides, we saw the two different systems, the arc spray system and the oxy fuel system. For metal dusting applications, we're applying a different alloy composition. So with the arc spray system, we're typically applying a C276 based alloy. With metal dusting, we're applying a 50-50 nickel chrome alloy. So using the HVOF, we apply that to avoid or to mitigate the metal dusting corrosion. In this case, it was a waste heat boiler, uh, the tube sheet, and particularly at the entrance points to those tubes where you get the, the high velocities, was experiencing severe metal dusting. This is an application IGS has been doing uh, since the mid-90s um, for uh, facilities such as GTL facilities, and we have a wide uh, and extensive experience of installing this type of solution. These are just some of the, the references. Um, so these are, are, are GTL facilities or gas to liquid plants. Um, so in some cases, methane, others natural gas, uh, and they, we're applying these um, alloys in order to mitigate metal dusting in specific locations in the units. So for example, the waste heat boiler tube sheet that you saw on the previous slide, or in autothermal reformer units in the burners, uh, in the nozzles and burner locations where they see this metal dusting phenomena take place. Um, but again, this is a, a, an application we've done uh, for many years and we've worked with the OEMs of the equipment um, in order to install this to prevent this type of corrosion damaging uh, the alloys that they're using in this equipment. So what we've talked about today is two different technologies of thermal spray, two different uh, systems that we're installing in order to mitigate corrosion. And when you're thinking about buying any type of corrosion barrier, you need to think about the value that's going to bring you over the lifetime of your equipment. So not just the, the purchase cost, but the cost of that corrosion barrier through to the end of the design life. How many times will you need to replace it? If it breaks down, will you have to do some mechanical maintenance? What could that mean to your shutdown or turnaround in terms of keeping to your schedules? Utilizing a, a robust system, a metallic cladding barrier like a high velocity thermal spray system gives you a long term solution. So you can start to plan your shutdowns with confidence. You can mitigate requirements for uh, maintenance, mechanical maintenance and repairs, and you can reduce your inspection requirements. In many cases, clients are able to extend the time between intervention of equipments from three to four to five years with the confidence they have of having a robust corrosion barrier system installed, which saves them significant value. So what are the client benefits that we can expect to deliver? Um, we want to reduce downtime, obviously increase the, the uptime of the vessel by eliminating unplanned maintenance, uh, unplanned outages, reduce the operating expenses by reducing the requirements for mechanical maintenance or repair of that corrosion barrier, deliver a high return on investment and provide a permanent solution that's gonna last for the design life of the equipment. So IGS is a business, we're a global company. We have our personnel, equipment and materials situated strategically around the world. So wherever you are today, wherever you're listening to this uh, presentation, I'm sure we can support you with our local services and provide any assistance that you may need in managing you know, corrosion challenges that you're seeing in your systems and your uh, processes. So thank you very much for listening to the presentation. I'm sorry if it was a little bit rushed and a bit brief, but we wanted to give you a quick overview of our capabilities and the type of experience that we have in managing um, corrosion and providing clients with preventative maintenance strategies that can help them to reduce the downtime of their equipment. So we'd be delighted now to take any questions you may have. Uh, thank you again for attending uh, this uh, seminar and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Thank you.